Hey guys, today we're going to go ahead and learn how to do a grungy text look like a distressed text on outline text. And it's going to be a really cool uh, tutorial for you guys. First, I'm going to go ahead and select my text tool. And the font I'm going to be using is called Freshman. Go ahead and type that up. And we'll type the word Freshman. Um, I'm going to, one of the things I like to do is I like to work in rich black. I think it looks great on the screen. So I've got my default set up as kind of a rich black just to make it look nice and, and, uh, and rich. I'm going to pull this off of the artboard. You'll see why I'm doing this. Uh, one of the first things I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and take the type and create the outlines to the, to the type. You can do that with uh, Shift Command O and that will create outlines. I do that all the time. Just uh, I, I can never remember where it is up here, but I do remember Shift Command O. And that basically turns all the font it's no longer a font. You can't type with it anymore. You have now got that where it's basically vector artwork and you can do a lot with it. That's an important step. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take that and we're going to copy that and paste it in the back. So you want to go to paste in back, which is command B. And you're going to see why we're working off of the artboard for this. I'm going to change the fill color to white and I'm going to change the stroke color to white. Okay, now by doing that, you can see a little white start starting to appear behind the text. But when you, when you change the stroke thickness to 10 points, you can really get that nice look. Now, just doing this with the font and the stroke in Illustrator kind of makes the font look a little bit more anemic because it pulls the stroke both ways. It pulls it in and out. This is really a way to do it only on the outside of the text, which makes it look nice and fat. It also can merge these words together, which makes it just have that nice collegiate look. All right, now without selecting anything in here, I'm going to keep that white text selected. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that in the back, okay? So now I've got the white text paste in the back, but now I'm going to go ahead and choose my fill as black and my stroke as black, okay? I'm going to change that to the stroke instead of 10 point, I'm going to go ahead and do 20 point. And you can see that nice, nice big fat outline. And that's how you get that wonderful effect uh, of an outline text. That's a great way to do that in Illustrator. I do that all the time and it's a great way to make that just look nice and full. It's a, it's a really cool logo design. A lot of companies utilize that in their logos and I just, I love it. All right, but today we're going to go ahead and distress that. Here's the problem. You're not dealing with just one set of outline text. You actually have three and they're, they're comprised of a lot of components, not just outline text. So what we've got to do is we've got to separate these components to make it uh, work in that distressed look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and take these parts out of the text. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, see, I'll put that on the white so you can see it. I'm going to go ahead and expand all of this. We're going to go ahead and take each object and expand it. Make sure that fill and stroke is selected. And you're going to expand that. After you expand it, you basically want to go to your Pathfinder. If, you're, if your palette doesn't look like mine, it's under Window, and it's under Pathfinder. You can find it there. But you want to take that Pathfinder and that first one, and you basically want to unite that and create it as one text block, or excuse me, one art, art block. It's basically vector artwork now. There's no, um, no more outlines on the inside of that. It is just one big block. And that's what you want to do for the white one and the black one. You want to go to Object, Expand, and you want to fill that. And then again, you want to go to your Pathfinder, and you want to take that and unite. Now you've got this is one big block, and this is one big block. Now this, this next step is important, and uh, because it gives you options. Let's just take that white one. Let's copy and paste that. Let's move it out of our way. And I'm going to take this white one, and I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's start doing some layer orders here. I'm going to move this to back. So I'm going to do Object, and I'm basically going to move that one to the back, send it to the back. And I'm going to pull this one, uh, let's see, well, let's see, let's do this. Let's uh, send that one to the back as well. And now I'm going to move it forward, just move, bring forward one. And then I'm going to send this one to the back and then bring that one, that, this one forward as well. Now I'm going to go back on this one, bring it to the front. I add one more step there. Apologize about that. And now when I, when I put this stuff together, I've got the outline in the back. I've got the freshman word in the front. And when I go to align these to my align tool, they look exactly like I want. Okay, I, I can select this, then I can select the white, and then I can select the back. That's why I did the order like that. 
but let's just go ahead and, and take a look at what I can do with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and again remember we, we had that, uh, that order there. That's really important that we have the copy of that and that we're going to use that in the future. So let's take this, let's drag it over the black text, the outline, and let's outline, uh, excuse me, let's go ahead and vertical align that with my align tool. Now I've got a thin outline of that and the nice white in the middle. And what I want to do is I want to select both of them and then I'm going to go ahead and go to my Pathfinder again and minus the front. And the reason why I did that is because now I have a transparent uh, tool here. I've got that nice outline that's transparent. And if I just want to put my uh, word freshman in there and align that, I can. It looks nice and great. And I've got a transparency. If I just want a nice, a nice clean text and have it on a t-shirt and have the t-shirt show through that color, what that allows you to do is add, it allows you to treat it almost like a secondary color without actually having the color. So it's a, it's a really good useful tool for screen printing and, and also for graphic design in general. But let's say I want to create a distressed look with this. Again, you've got three different things happening here. You've got the outline text here, you've got the original text, and then you've got the fill that we're going to be using in this. You can't just do all of it like we did in the grunge tutorial. You actually have to use uh, three different objects on this. But let's go ahead and put them back together, and let's just outline this as we can. Let's see, I'll send that to back. I got them out of order. I apologize about that. I want to make sure that everything is in order, um, and I think it is. So we'll go ahead and, and drag that here. Now this is where I like working on the white side of the uh, artboard, because now I can, I can kind of treat the white as a transparent, and I'm going to go to my brush tool and select my paintbrush. And as you can see, I've already got chalk. I've actually got the, uh, the chalk from the charcoal under artistic chalk and charcoal pencil. I've got that selected. If your palette's not designed like mine and you need to know where your brush is, it's under window and of course brushes. So you can find it that way. But I love the charcoal for this. And I'm going to select white. I'm going to make sure it's selected to the stroke, not the actual um, fill. And now that I've got the, the paintbrush tool selected, I'm just going to draw a line here. That's cool, that adds a nice distress look, two and three. I'm just going to do three on that for this tutorial. And that looks pretty cool, it looks pretty distressed. It looks like you've worn that shirt quite a bit and it gives you that nice cool look. Well in the last tutorial you saw that I could select everything and then go to object and then expand appearance. But you can't do that with this one because we've created three different objects and it's only going to recognize one. So now what we've got to do is we're going to take that, we've got to copy and paste, and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that a few times. You'll see why. I'm going to work in the gray area of the, of the artboard just to see what I can do, or off of the artboard I should say. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select these three strokes and that uh, black text, the original text. So I'm going to go ahead and select the black and hold shift and each one of these strokes I'm going to basically select that. And then I'm going to drag that off of a working environment here. Uh, so I've got my freshman word there and the part that's going to be scuffed up. That's what I want it to look like. Now the second part, I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to leave that. Uh, um, I'm going to leave. I can, actually, I don't need this. I'm going to go ahead and select the outline text. Okay. Now I've got the outline, and I'm going to take one, two, and three, and I'm going to drag that down here. So now I've got the outline part ready to be grunged as well. As you can see, I got rid of all of the strokes. I'm going to delete that freshman there. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to remove the black, and I'm going to select just the white part in the middle. And that's when your order of operations comes into play when you're basically putting things in front and the middle. That's why I did that, so I could select it easily. So I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and hold shift down, select the grunge that, uh, the brush stroke that I've already done, and I'm going to move that down here. Now, as you can see, I've got three different sections. I've got the original text, I've got the outline of the text, and then of course I've got the white fill. Here's where we can really start to have fun with this. I'm going to go ahead and select the first white part and go ahead and go to Object, Expand Appearance. After I've done that, I want to come back to my Pathfinder, click on the second tool, but I want to Option click that. So when you Option click, it's basically going to remove everything from it you expand it, and look, now you've removed all the scratchiness from the text, which is great. 
because that way it's going to line up and look like it's within one piece of artwork that it all happened on the same shirt. I want to do the same thing to the second area. I basically select all of that, object, expand appearance, do the same thing. Go to Pathfinder, hold down Option, minus front, and then expand. Now I've got the same distress look coming from my outer layer. Then of course we can go back to the word freshman, our original text, and object, expand appearance, Pathfinder, Option, click, and then expand. Now the reason why it was important to do all of that and all three of these is because that's what I wanted it to look like. But if I didn't do this section, um, I wouldn't be able to do, I can make it transparent if I want to, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't do that section with it. It would look like it came from another, another distressed part of the shirt. So if I select this tool, I can align the back up with the align tool, and I can choose it to be either transparent, and that way you've got that nice distressed flow going through the shirt from the top. It looks like it came from the same place. And I can drop this back in there and align that up. Let's see, bam and bam. And I guess I need to send that to the back. There you go. And I've got all of it. As you see, as I zoom in, all of it is distressed in the right place. The white is gone, the black is gone, and the outline is gone. So it's a really, really cool tool. It's a way to get a really great distressed look. And of course, it's vector. So it means you can size it and scale it however you want. Illustrator is my absolute favorite tool to work with. And I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. And uh, I really got to tell you, be honest with you, I did it for me. I forget this trick all the time. So I made it for myself. Anyway, enjoy.